Hey, glad you stopped by. Now, real quick before we get started, for those of you that don't have one yet, this video references a website from my-real-estate-website.com. Uh, you can get one by going to this web address and clicking the little sign up button. And then any links or other downloadable content that I mentioned during this video can be found on its blog post. So if you're watching it on YouTube or some other video website like that, go ahead and click that link in the description and that'll take you to the right place. And this video was recorded uh, for YouTube high def. So if the text looks all jagged and goofy or anything like that, you can click the HD icon in the bottom right corner that should improve the quality for you quite a bit. That's me, I'm Jason Massingale. There are a few of the ways you can get a hold of me. Uh, I like communicating with text message, so if you're into that kind of thing too, then definitely feel free to shoot me a text anytime. But more importantly, if you have any questions about this video or how to do something on your website, the best thing you can do is leave me a comment. Um, enough for all that intro stuff though, let's go ahead and get into this thing now. now let's go ahead and talk about adding a blog post to your website. Here's what we're going to cover in this video, how to create a post, and remember a post is a web page that's kind of on a more detailed topic, sometimes they're time sensitive, but it's generally more specific information. I'm going to show you how to save it as a draft and preview it, that way if you want to do it in pieces, you know, just see how it looks before you actually publish it and make it live on your website, we'll cover that. We're going to assign it to a category so you can see how it shows up. We're going to add an article image and a thumbnail image. Then we're going to add it to the featured homepage slideshow so you can see how easy it is to add something to that. Then we're going to look at related category links and response forms, how to add those to the page. Then we're going to enable comments, trackbacks, and pingbacks, and how to change the post author and where your post appears. And what we're not going to cover in this video, or what's covered somewhere else, is logging into your website using the WYSIWYG, their What You See Is What You Get editor. Uh, we're not going to get into any customizing of HTML. And I'm not going to cover how to get the photos to the right resolution, to the right sizes and all that stuff. And we're also not going to cover adding properties in this video. Now let's go ahead and hop over to the website. The first thing we see when we log in is the dashboard. Now to create a new post, we're just going to come right up here and click New Post. And here we go, here's our page. Alright, this is kind of like an email subject line. This is where the title goes here. And here's here's where the content goes. Then I want you to watch this little save draft thing here as you make changes. It automatically saves them occasionally, so I could click it myself right now, or if we give it just a moment. There you go, it automatically saved itself. And if we're going to preview it and see how it looks, we just click preview. And it opens it in a new tab for us. So our previous window or tab that we were actually editing it in is still there. And this is what that basic little post is going to look like. Then we're going to assign it to a category. Let's put it in the buy a home category. Now this part right here we don't need because we're not adding a property. This part we don't need either because it's related to properties. What we're going to do next is look at the article image and the thumbnail image. Now I already know the URL or the address that this image is stored on the internet. So I'm just going to paste that in there. That's the address to it right there. Then the thumbnail image, we're going to paste that in. We're not going to add it to that slideshow on the home page yet, but let's go ahead and add a related category. We put it in the buyer category up there, the buy home category, so let's make it in the buyer category here. And let's say we want to display a form on there, just a regular old contact form. We're going to check that box to display it. Yes, we want to. And we're going to select the contact form. All right, then on comments, trackbacks, and pingbacks, that's in this section right here. My general rule of thumb on this is it for posts, I allow comments and pingbacks, but for pages, I generally don't. You can do whatever you like with that, but we're just going to leave them checked. They're, by default, they are selected, so we're going to keep it like that. Then let's change the post author. Right here, you can select from a drop down list who you want it to be. You want to make it me. And let's go ahead and publish it. 
And once our post is published, we see right here that it was published and we can view it now if we'd like to. And here's what it looks like. Remember, this is the comment that I added earlier. We've still got the title here. This image right here showed up because I pasted a link in the article image spot. This form right here showed up because we checked the box and selected we want the contact form. And this related category section right here showed up because we said we want to include the buyer related category. Then let's take a look at where else this post shows up. It's going to be on the sidebar. On every page that loads, it's got the five most recent articles or posts that you've published. So it shows up here. Anywhere that we've got the buyer related category box enabled, it's going to show up there because we put it in the buyer category. Down here at the bottom of the page, it's going to show up in this home buyer category. If we actually go look at the category itself, we're also going to see it there. Now this is the thumbnail image that I added directly below the article image. So if someone wants to read this article, they can click there, the title, or they can click the image, and it'll take them to that page. Next thing we're going to talk about is adding it to the featured slideshow. And that's this thing right here on the home page. So to make it show up in there, all we do is we go back to the post. We tell it we want it to be in the featured category and update the post. Now when we go back to the home page and we refresh. These are the previous three articles that were in there. You can see the fourth one is right here. We haven't loaded an image, so we just get this little black bar right here. So let's go back and add an image now. We're just going to use the same one for the featured image that we used for the article image. It's not going to be the right size. It's not going to look right. But when we add a featured image, I want you to notice that you don't have to have an article image in here because it's going to automatically take this photo and just downsize it to display it on the post page. Let's update again. Then go back to the home page and refresh again. And notice the title of our blog post shows up here, the content shows up here, and it'll cut it off if there's more than what fits on that part. It brought our picture in for us and it shows it on the slideshow. And it just crops that image to give us a thumbnail right here. We click on it, it'll take us back to that blog post. And that covers it for this one. All right, I hope this video was useful. Uh, here, there's my info one more time if you want to get in touch with me. All right, what I want you to do now is just let me know what you think about it. You know, if it sucked, let me know that. If it's good, let me know. And if you liked it enough that you want to be notified when we add new stuff, then go ahead and click that pretty little gold subscribe button up there to the right. Then you'll get an email anytime we add new stuff. Take care. Talk soon.